waiting to be taken on a rendezvous with death. They were Nazi gods, savages, beating us on the head, forcing us into cattle cars, shouting and screaming, and shooting sporadically into the crowd. And all of a sudden, I saw that the old man's son fell. A bullet pierced his heart, and the old man fell upon his joy, and he tried to revive him, only to discover that one of the German guards jeered at him and laughed. Don't worry, old man, a few more minutes, a little while longer, and you will join him. And soon, we were herded into the cattle cars. Perhaps we were a hundred, perhaps we were two. Like so many sardines. There was no air to breathe. There was no food. There was only shrieking, shouting, fear, agony. And I noticed the old man, he was sitting not too far from me. He was mumbling to himself. I couldn't understand why he did not drink his little water. Each of us had a small canteen of water. Why didn't the old man drink? And then I realized, poor old man, he must have lost his sanity. And so the train rolled on to a rendezvous with that. And all of a sudden, the train came to a stop. The doors opened, shouting, screaming, bullets, rifle butts. Achtung! And the old man was placed on line, on a line where he would be ready food for the flames of the crematorium. And suddenly I noticed something strange. The old man, he opened his canteen of water, and I said to myself, Ah, now before he dies, the poor old man, he will quench his thirst, he will drink. But strangely enough, the old man, he did not drink. Instead, he took the water and he poured it over his hand and he cried out, Yes, God, yes, God, An old man who took his last drop of water to sanctify the name of God. You and I, we are the heirs of that old man.
are the heirs of the old man. And yet, a generation has been permitted to grow up without knowing him, without understanding him, without comprehending why he lived or why he died. Meet Melanie. Her story is the story of our generation. Her life is a reflection of the agonies of our time. Melanie was a student at a Boston University. She became involved with the drug scene. And when she was not on drugs, she transported her mind into another world by turning on to music. And the music always had to be loud, very loud. The music had to shriek, had to wail. The music had to be so loud that it would obliterate her environment, that it would dull her senses, deaden her mind, and numb the agony in her soul. Who can help Melanie? Who will understand her pain? Perhaps a change of environment, a change of place. And so Melanie is transported to Tel Aviv. But instead of spending her days and nights at the University of Tel Aviv, she spends her time tripping God on the beaches of Elat. And then Melanie writes in her diary that she knows no peace. She has no rest. Her soul aches. Frustration on every level. It is not drugs that Melanie seeks, but a way of life. Melanie wants purpose. Reason for existence. And Melanie is told that in India, there are Jewish students who had joined an ashram. So Melanie takes a trip, a voyage of self-discovery to India. But on her way, she stops off in Kabul, Afghanistan. And over there, in a chicken bazaar, she takes an overdose of drugs. And at the age of 19, she dies. A young Jewish girl, dead in a chicken bazaar in Kabul, Afghanistan. Melanie died because there was no one in this whole world to speak to Melanie, to reach out to her, to tell Melanie that her name was not Melanie, but that her name was Miriam, Dvova, Rachel. Melanie, Melanie, is it reason, purpose that you seek in life? Then open the book. You are part of Mamlechet Kuhanim, a priestly kingdom. Melanie, Melanie, you stood at Mount Sinai. You heard the voice of God. His great light illuminated your soul. Open the books. Discover your inner self. You are part of Mamlechet Kohanim, the priestly kingdom, the holy nation.